Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week, the video where we go through all the little bits and bobs and blobs of news that we couldn't squeeze into any other video. Before we go any further, Happy New Year, Happy 2022. Depending on where in the world you're watching this, by the time it goes live, some of you, it is a different year to another. So don't spoil it for anyone. Keep it to yourself, really. You know, spoiler alert and that. But let's go straight into story number one. Again, this isn't something I could make a whole video about, but it concerns the Synology RT 6600AX. We already talked about it on the channel about a month ago when Synology did their big event, but not, we're starting to see a little bit more dribs and drabs of information starting to appear. Now, back when the MR2200AC, the RT1900AC, and the um, RT2600AC first arrived, around about six to eight months before their full release, we started seeing lots of documents arriving online. Now, these would generally appear around FCC licensing websites and um, basically wireless security because again when it comes to routers there is a whole different rigmarole of checks and security that have to be gone through with a product to become universally worldwide available and again that does differ from region to region with some regions being a lot stricter than others but the result of it is that a lot of the time these documents start to appear online that not only show these items a little bit more fleshed out something we're starting to see very gradually but also gives you a good indicator of how long these things are going to take before they arrive and we're starting to see FCC testing documents and um, diagrams and indeed even some photos in some docs that I'm checking out for legitimacy arriving on some of these FCC websites it's everything that's on there security documentation you know legal stuff like that but also lots of information on testing when it comes to wireless frequency and although this information as it stands on its own isn't hugely sexy or appealing I will add that it's a nice indicator that I think this device is going to be seeing definitely a first half of 2022 release maybe even earlier than you know summer maybe something like spring because again we've been through this before with the other root system we've got a good understanding of how long these things take so again do stay tuned for more information as these documents start to appear more and more online and as more and more information becomes available on the hardware architecture of this system the cpu memory that's inside because it's almost certainly going to be a qualcomm or something or like maybe a real tech but that does mean that the architecture of this router is something a lot of people are going to be taking a good, hard, long, long look at when you're comparing it against the other ones. It isn't just about Wi-Fi 6. I want to know the architecture of this device moving forward. Now, talking about things moving forward, or in some cases ceasing to be entirely, and this comes down to uh, an article that went out on Marius Hosting just before Christmas. Uh, this is regarding uh, the lifespan of DSM 6.2. And by lifespan, I mean support by the brand. Um, with um, over there on Marius, and Marius Hosting, finding on a white paper the details of when uh, DSM 6.2 is currently scheduled to go EOL, and that's going to be basically how long Synology plan to formally support the platform. It doesn't mean that it's going to be game over. It doesn't mean they won't, you know, extend that a little bit or change things or at least monitor individual applications and more. But they are stating on there that June 2023 is when that oh, DSM 6.2 is scheduled for end of official support. So again, that's a flexible concept. It doesn't mean it's 100% concrete. And if you go through there, you can find more information about the support of previous versions of Synology's uh, DSM platforms in like DSM 4 and 5 and you can see that they have extended the map time so this is by no means concrete but still if you are someone that's still sitting on the fence about DSM 7 upgrades much like a lot of you with Windows 10 moving into 11 because you're worried about what applications will cease to work or what becomes you know more straightforward I know a number of you one of the biggest hurdles is moving away from photo station and moments and onto Synology photos but nonetheless, it's great that at least we have some general idea of how long DSM 6.2 is going to remain very much in the Synology roadmap. Now, on the subject of roadmaps, I want to talk about something that appeared on Tweaktown um, within the last week or so. It's something we covered in Data News of the Week quite a few months ago, but it's now becoming a reality. And that is the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus's 8TB uh, PCIe Gen 4 2280 SSD. It's not the first time we've seen SSDs arriving in 2280 length um, at ATB, but generally all of those SSDs that we talked about previously that are at that capacity level have taken advantage of a much more affordable uh, NAND, the, the storage chips that are on side that drive to hold the data, known as QLC, quad layer NAND, and uh, quad, layer, quad layer cell NAND, I should say. And the result of that is 
Although you get the capacity, you get lower performance and lower durability. But they, so Brent Rocket 4 uh, uh, Plus 8TB drive here, uses 3D NAND. It takes advantage of 112 layer uh, BICS uh, 3D TLC NAND there. And again, this is an SSD that isn't breaking into the 22110 length there. Now again, we've talked about this on the channel previously. But what's intriguing now is two new little nuggets of information. Now, first and foremost, we are seeing formal reviews start to arrive online. As mentioned, with Tweaktown very much being at the forefront of that with their full review there with bench testing. There are still little bits of information missing. I've got to say, uh, stuff like the durability of uh, drive rights per day and terabytes written is still a little bit up in the air on that one. I will be interested to see what the stats are on that because, of course, if you are moving into keeping the 2280 length, that means you are effectively doubling down on the chips, uh, that NAND in there in terms of their overall capacity there inside. So that's something I'm looking forward to finding out more about. But according to their stats, they reported uh, from the manufacturer 7,400 megabytes per second sequential read over 6,600 megabytes per second sequential write is indeed maintained using artificial crystal um, disk benchmarks there they are able to achieve that performance there obviously these things fluctuate a little bit more as you can to like um as ssd and atom and stuff like that but to nonetheless the ssd performs it definitely performs high performs higher than any other by good margin any other uh 2280 length um 8tb nvme ssd particularly in pcie gen 4. the other bit of information that i found out directly from sabrent themselves because i'm currently talking with them about trying to arrange some ssds to go in that monster um owc card that we talked about last year i say last year depending on where you are in the world um but um with sabrent i've contacted them directly about this 8tb to get basically an answer to the million dollar question for a lot of ps5 users it does this drive work in a ps5 and the sad answer is no um this ssd has been tested in the current available firmware for ps5 so this 8tb sovereign ssd has been tested in the latest firmware of the ps5 and it didn't work that's from sprint themselves now that doesn't mean it's not going to change in the future bear in mind when the ps5 was first revealed and its um, storage expansion bay was unveiled they did state it would have a 4 tb maximum however a lot of that a lot of people including myself wondered was that because 4 tb at pcie gen 4 uh, 3d tlc nand ssd was kind of the top end anyway so that was why they went with 4TB, because that was kind of the accepted minimum. But no, currently in the existing chipset of that system, they tried, uh, Sabrent tried the 8TB and it didn't work. Now, again, might change in future, might be a firmware revision, might be, you know, a PlayStation 5 Pro or whatever. But for now, that's the main thing here. This drive is real, it's out there for review, it's going to be available for people. But as it stands, this 8TB drive is not going to be PS5 compatible. And finally, a bit of a bummer news, uh, particularly for QNAP users, but it doesn't sound like it's exclusively QNAP users. But over the Christmas period, there was a rise in Ichorax uh, ransomware attacks. For those who aren't aware, this is something that, let's be realistic, predominantly hit QNAP devices earlier in 2021. There was a big outbreak of it of people's data being encrypted up a lot of the time it was down to people having unsafe um, external network connectivity um, uh, sorry internet connectivity or fairly rubbish password and authentication control but beyond that there was also um you know uh, vulner vulnerabilities uh, that were found in some applications some users in the forums have kind of pointed fingers at photo station but i can't really find anything concrete about that right now uh, bleeping computer have done a great article on this detailing a lot of stuff from the forums um so i do recommend it will be linked in the uh, uh, description below but what's really intriguing is that at the moment the free tools that a lot of people were utilizing, let's mute that laptop there, a lot of the free tools that people were utilizing right now to kind of unencrypt and recover their stuff, a lot of the, the tool, if you've been encrypted beyond, I believe it's July uh, 2021, if this you've been hit by your Chorax, a lot of these tools aren't working. Kind of a big tool a lot of people are recommending at the moment is the bloody tools decryptor, which is completely free. But a lot of the free decrypting tools right now, people are saying, obviously, Ichorax have, have uh, kind of changed the algorithm of their encryption system there. And therefore, it might take a bit of time before this can be worked with or indeed cracked at all. Now, again, it's a real bummer that we keep seeing this happening in the world of NAS. One way or another, 
it's something, again, they're always going to stay one step ahead of the hackers. And the big, big takeaway from all of this every single time is get your backups in order, get your rigorous security measurements in order, get all of those things lined up. I'm not going to say that brands aren't in their own way culpable for this, but at the same time, if you've got all your data in one single location, you're doing something wrong there anyway. You've got to have at least a two-stage backup there. But let's move over to the results of that giveaway. I said I'd do the giveaway this week, and of course I'm going to. We've got a bunch of stuff to give away, so let's flick over, get everything set up, and do our big giveaway there. Okay, so straight on to the giveaway. Here are all of our items here on the table. We've got the Wi-Fi 6 card. We've got a smart IP camera there. We've got SSDs to give away. And we've got a couple of NADs. It's not waste any time. I've got the results. It's a little over 350, 360 results inside the tin there. These are all the people that have entered in from putting that comment in the videos. There's a couple of Facebookers in there as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull them at random. We're going to work this way across the table. And we're going to go for this first one here. Let's pick one out and make sure we final it down. And this is, let's have a look, Bad Drivers in Kent. Um, that apparently is your YouTube username. I don't know if that's your channel. Who knows? Um, everyone that ever gets selected today, they're going to be contacted directly via the comment they made. I will make a point. I'll spend a bit of time trying to contact all of you. But um, again, without opening a dialogue, it's very hard for you to verify the email address, which it will do later. So don't think you can just piggyback on. But nevertheless, uh, Bad Driver in Kent, or Drivers in Kent. That's what it said, didn't it? Bad Drivers in Kent. You, sir, have won yourself a Wi-Fi 6 card there. So pop that over there. Next up, let's go for the next one. Let's go for another random. Let's go for that there. Uh, Denmark Sanier. Sanier. Denmark Sanier. So there you go. Uh, Denmark Sanier. That's your name. Again, could be your YouTube channel. Could be just a username or an email. You've got yourself a night vision camera from camera. It's a night chroma camera there. Lovely little thing. Watch out my video about it. And again, I'll, com I'll contact you via the comment you made. All right, next up. Let's go for the next one. Go for this. Bring it down because a lot of these are stuck together. Uh, this is, oh, we've got a tiny one here. Trevor May. Wow, that is very direct. If that is your username, I really hope that isn't actually your name. But yes, Trevor May. You, sir, have won. I say, sir, I mean, 2021, 2022. It could be a girl. We don't know. Um, you've got yourself a SATA SSD, Trevor. So, again, I'll contact you via the comment. Or if you're watching this video, you can plug me directly at Robbie at NAS Compares. Let's pop that there. And next, let's go for another one. Let's go for that slightly longer one that time, I think. Oh, this is a long bit of paper. Let's have a look. Neil Buchanan. Um, Buchanan, I, if that is Neil Buchanan, that's impressive. But it, uh, Buchanan, Buch Buchanan, whoever you are, if that is you from the TV show, fantastic. But if that is you, you've just won yourself an SSD T87175. Well done, you. So again, let's pop you there. Let's go for another one there. Get another clue out the bottom there. And we've got ourselves um, Gaza Gaming. A solid name there, Gaza Gaming. Um, again. Lovely stuff there. You just got Gaza and Gaming in brackets. Lovely stuff. So for you, you've got yourself an SSD. You've got yourself the Sabrent there. Well done. And finally, let's go for the Nazis here. Let's go for those. I've got a long one there. Do I start again? Because I just saw that there. Let's carry on. Oh, I've got two. Start again. Sorry. Let's go for that. Randomly. Doing it randomly. Trying to keep this as straightforward and transparent as possible. Addictive Media. There we go. Addictive Media. Whoever you are, you've just won yourself a TerraMaster NAS there, the F5. Let's pop that there. And now we've got the Star Prize. Let's uh, move that slightly out. I'm not moving anything out of camera. It'll look dodge. It's the Star Prize. This is the TBS 464. So let's get that there. Give it a proper little mix this time. Go for that one there. Um, this is... I um, I gate one I G eight one whoever you are with your incredibly innocuous unrecognisable name you sir have I say sir could be a girl again 2021 2022 you've got yourself a TBS four six four no SSDs included don't forget that keep that to one side because I've got to keep track um, but yes TBS four six four all of you guys are going to be contacted in the comments below um, so again I'll either contact you below if you do message through there or I will be contacting you through the comments you made on there again i'll get these out to you sometime before the end of january but this has been the big giveaway here 
I think it's gone well. Let me know what you think. I hope you will do another one in the next couple of months, really. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's news video. Subscribe if you want to stay abreast of all the things happening in the world of Data Storage E News, the Day News of the Week. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. And again, if you are one of the people that are lucky winners today, you can contact me in the comments below, or I'm going to be contacting you for the comments you contacted me on. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Let's have ourselves a great 2022. I'll see you next time.